Hey Rabbits, it's Jixie and today I want to present 15 German words to you that are also commonly used in English. You know, the same way that Germans, for example, use the English word skateboard. Au, ich bin von meinem Skateboard gefallen. But the other way around. German words that snuck their way into the English language. Not only will I speak about the classics such as Kindergarten or Schnitzel, there will be a couple of surprises as well. German words that I didn't know were part of the English language before I did the research for this video. Which was a pain in the ass, by the way. <laughs> Let me tell you that the information that you find online couldn't be more confusing or less trustworthy. Everything was way more clickbaity than reliable. Such as your channel? <clears throat> Luckily, I got some support. Dana from the YouTube channel Wanted Adventure helped me to figure out which German words are in fact used by Americans as well and agreed to join me for today's video. Hi, Dana! Hey, everyone! Great to be back in another video with you again, Trixie. Since I thought that it may be interesting to compare the way that the same German word is used and pronounced in the two different languages, Dana will jump in as my American sidekick. Say each word and give us an example sentence of how it would be applied in English. Make sure to check out Dana's channel right after watching this video. I'm sure you're gonna love her videos as well. I'm gonna put a link to her channel in the video description. But without further ado, here are 15 German words that are also used in English. Let's begin with the classics. When I came up with the idea for this video, the first word I thought about was kindergarten, a sort of preschool or play school for young children. In Germany, these kids are usually between three and six years old, but Dana told me that children in America usually begin kindergarten at age five or six, and then only go there for a year before they start school. Germans would say kindergarten like this. Mein Sohn geht seit August in den Kindergarten. So, Dana, how do you say kindergarten and how would you use the word? Kindergarten. He takes the bus to and from kindergarten every day. Okay, so what I noticed is that T kind of became D again in English. It's kindergarten instead of kindergarten. It seems that Americans start pretty German and then Americanize the word in the end. The second word that is kind of famous for appearing in both languages, German and English, is Bratwurst, a fried sausage and one of the favorite dishes of Germans. Zum Mittag werde ich heute eine Bratwurst mit Pommes essen. But how does Bratwurst sound in English? Bratwurst. I'll have a Bratwurst, please. But you can also shorten this to just brat. So like, let's grill up some brats for dinner. That is so weird and interesting and it would be pretty strange if Germans did the same thing. Hey, Alter, ich hab Kohldampf. Brat mir meine Brat. This sounds pretty awkward to me because the important part about Bratwurst is the Wurst part and not the Brat part. Talking about typical German food, Schnitzel is also commonly used in English. Great, now I'm hungry. Mm -hmm, me too. You could, for example, say Seit letzter Woche habe ich schon ein Kilo abgenommen. Zeit für ein leckeres, saftiges Schnitzel zur Belohnung. Schnitzel. How would you say it, Dana? Schnitzel. I could go for a big old Schnitzel for dinner. One German word that you may have heard an English speaker say as well is Doppelgänger. You know, a person that looks a lot like another, for example, like a celebrity, almost as if they were twins or at least siblings. People keep telling me I look like Avril Lavigne. Peter, heute habe ich in der Stadt einen Mann gesehen, der sah genau so aus wie du. Das war wohl dein Doppelgänger. Does it work the same way in English? Doppelgänger. Trixie, have you seen in the comments that some people say you and I are doppelgangers? If you travel, you need a huge backpack to fit all your stuff in there. I found out that you can also say Rucksack in English. In German, der Rucksack can have different sizes. It can be a small one that you take to school with or a huge one that you could basically fit your whole house in. Ugh, mein Rucksack ist heute wieder so schwer. How do you use Rucksack in English, Dana? Rucksack. Could you please carry the rucksack? It's way too heavy. At least in the US, the word rucksack is often used for a more heavy duty kind of backpack for hiking or backpacking around Europe, for example. 
Okay, so it's not quite the same thing, but English speakers do use the German word Rucksack as well. Now imagine that you have a very light and comfortable backpack on your shoulders, while a person that you don't like has to carry a very heavy one filled with two elephants and half a rhino. You may feel something like Schadenfreude, right? Exactly! Schadenfreude, the joy of seeing another person struggle while you are alright, is another German word that many English speakers use. Nichts gegen ein bisschen Schadenfreude. Dana? Schadenfreude. Everyone feels a little Schadenfreude now and then, right? The next two words are often found on lists of the most beautiful German words. Apparently, they are so beautiful that the English language simply stole them. The first one is Zeitgeist, the spirit or ideology of a certain period of time. Sein Roman erfasst präzise den Zeitgeist unserer modernen Welt. Zeitgeist is a pretty edgy German word, so how do Americans say it? Zeitgeist. Capturing the Zeitgeist of a whole year in one video is pretty tricky to do, but if done right, it usually gives me goosebumps. So it's actually more like Zeitgeist in English, which would make it Zeit spirit instead of Time spirit in German. The second one is Weltschmerz, literally meaning world pain. Wenn ich an all das Böse denke, was die Menschheit jeden Tag anrichtet, erfüllt mich purer Weltschmerz. Another pretty harsh sounding German term, Weltschmerz. So how do Americans handle it? Weltschmerz. Weltschmerz is certainly an intense feeling. Speaking about emotional pain, many people also suffer from high anxiety. Some of them just from time to time and some of them all the time. In English, this feeling of constant worrying, distress and dread can also be called Angst. Exactly like the word Angst in German. It's only the pronunciation that differs a little and the fact that it doesn't describe fear in general, but only anxiety, the feeling that I just told you about. But Angst left me noch in Wahnsinn. So how would you use and say this word in English, Dana? Angst. I am waiting in angst for the results of the math test from last week. Wow, this video is uber cool. Would be something I would like to read in the comments. Apart from that, did you notice something? Exactly. I said uber, which is related to the German word uber. Uber can be used for many different things, but in English it's used to put emphasis on an adjective. For example, meaning really or extremely. This is pretty rare in German, but possible. Boah, das ist ja übergeil! But now it's your turn, Dana. Give us an uber awesome example for this word. Uber. A six-bedroom penthouse apartment in the center of Munich would be really nice, but only the uber rich could afford that. And yeah, we pretty much just pretend that those two little dots above the U don't even exist there. We pronounce the word without the umlaut and often write it without the umlaut too. Hmm, who of you paid attention? Dana just said another German word. Umlaut. Das Ä äh ist ein Umlaut. Umlaut. German words with an umlaut sometimes lose that umlaut when they enter the English language. Many friends from other countries told me that one of the first things they noticed about Germany is that everything seems to be verboten. Tiere füttern verboten. Hunde verboten. Fenster öffnen verboten. Rauchen verboten. Verboten is the German word for prohibited or forbidden. But do I really have to tell you that? I got to know that English speakers also use verboten from time to time. Is that right, Dana? Yes, it is. Verboten. Don't even think about it. It's verboten. I don't know about you, but I as a German find that very funny. Even more funny to my ears, kaputt, broken, can be used in English as well. Ooh, jetzt ist das Glas kaputt. Can you really say kaputt in English too? Kaputt. After spilling a whole bottle of water on my computer. Yep, it's kaputt. Normally we get sad about things being kaputt, but sometimes the broken thing was so ugly that we are actually glad it's gone. For example, all this kitsch in grandma's living room. Oops, dropped it. You guessed right. Kitsch is another German word that can be found in the English language. Meine Freundin möchte mit mir am Wochenende zu Ikea. Sie kauft bestimmt wieder den größten Kitsch. Now please tell us how you use Kitsch, Dana. Kitsch. Everything at the flea market was just too kitsch for my taste. Last but not least, the German word Dreck. 
Yes, English speakers also use it from time to time. Not related to dirt though, more like a negative attribute, such as in Was du magst Trixis YouTube Kanal? Das ist doch der letzte Dreck. How would Americans say it? Dreck. Turn off that dreck and go outside and play. It's a beautiful day outside. Yeah, I was channeling my mom with that one. Hi, mom. All right, Babbits, I hope you had fun with today's episode and you were as surprised as me about some of the German words also being used in English. All in all, I can conclude that there are more German words in the English language than I expected, even though they are pronounced a bit differently, like in an Americanized way. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Bratwurst. Bratwurst. Schnitzel. Schnitzel. Doppelgänger. Doppelgänger. Rucksack. Rucksack. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Weltschmerz. Weltschmerz. Angst. Angst. Über. Über. Umlaut. Umlaut. Verboten. Verboten. Kaputt. Kaputt. Kitsch. Kitsch. Dreck. Dreck. Everything sounds a bit rounder. The Z in Zeitgeist becomes a Z. Zeitgeist. Kindergarten becomes Kindergarten. Umlauts kinda disappear, so that über becomes uber. In other cases, they suddenly appear, so that angst becomes angst. The R is a lot like rrrr, rucksack, dreck, schmerz. Everything is just less edgy and softer, like Deutsch mit abgerundeten Ecken, a childproof version of German. If you are German too, maybe you can tell me how you felt hearing these words used by an American. I don't want to be rude, but to me it sounds kind of funny. My attention gets caught right away, like, huh? Did somebody say something in German? Is it the same for you? And if you are an English speaker, how is it to you if I, as a German, use anglicisms, saying something like, ha, da ist ja ordentlich was los auf dem Dancefloor. Oh, ich hab Hunger. Lass uns mal zum All-You-Can-Eat-Buffet gehen. Wow, das Kleid ist ja ein richtiger Eyecatcher. Is it kind of funny too? What do you think, Dana? Yeah, it definitely catches me off guard too. I'm the same as you. I'm like, oh, hello there, English word. Nice to see you. Now let me know in the comments what you think about this. Did you know all of these German words were also used in English? And can you think of more of this kind? Thanks a lot to Dana for joining me for today's episode. You can find a link to her channel in the video description. Thanks so much, Trixie, for inviting me into another one of your videos. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up because that would make Dana and me very, very happy. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And here is another collaboration video on Dana's channel that you should definitely check out. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos. And if you want to support me even more, you can also find me on Patreon. Your help would be appreciated so, so much. Much. Now wish you all a wonderful day. Check out my other videos if you'd like to and hopefully we are gonna see each other in my next video. Auf Wiedersehen, Dana! Auf Wiedersehen! And now my rabbits! Bye!